Hello, my name is Nate. Welcome to my art lab. We have something very special for you this month. Um, every month I challenge my Patreon group to uh, a new technique or something designed to enhance their skills with all different kinds of fluid art. Uh, and this month we have cloud pours. Today's a really great day to do it. There's lots of clouds in the background. <laughs> um, it's a special technique that requires special ingredients. Um, and a lot of people do it with a, with a straight pour uh, because it creates beautiful fingerlings that it puff up and uh, quite, looks quite celestial. Um, and uh, in fact, our guest artist this month is someone who specializes in cloud pours and it's Tiffany Bergeron from Willie B Studios. Her cloud pours are spectacular. And if you're not subscribed to her channel yet, you definitely should. I'll put her, I'll link her channel in the video description below. Um, and, um, but I've seen some of the work from all of the Art Lab. It's gonna be, you're gonna be really impressed with what, what everybody's made. Um, so at the end of this video, I will post some pictures from the Art Lab members who do not have YouTube channels. And then following this video is Tiffany Bergeron's uh, submission. And then everybody else in the, in the Patreon group who do also have YouTube channels will do a, a, a quick little playlist, which is also listed in the video description. I hope you check them all out. And if you're interested in uh, joining my art lab, the Patreon link is also in the video description. We would love to have you. So let's get started. Let's get down to the canvas and paint some clouds. Okay, let's make a cloud pour. So just as I mentioned in my intro, um, a lot of people when they think of cloud pours, they think of straight pours. Um, but it's actually a technique that you can combine with lots of other different techniques. Um, once you have a cloud mix recipe that works for you, um, you can combine it with lots of different things. So instead of a straight pour today, I'm gonna to do one of the techniques that I'll be teaching at the Fluid Art Boutique Conference in Washington, D.C., August 6 through 8. Um, I'm going to do a Nautilus pour using my cloud mix. So let me walk you through my, my colors. Um, this is Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Copper. And the gold on this end is Joe Sonia's Pale Gold. I really like this gold when I want when I don't want a lot of cells from the gold. So uh, it gives me that beautiful uh, gold shimmer, but it doesn't necessarily make a lot of um, cells. Uh, my brown here is um, Amsterdam Burnt Umber, and this is a semi-transparent color, so it should react really well with my cloud mix, which is a mix of Chromacryl Acrylic Essentials in white, Vallejo Pearl Medium, and DecoArt Satin Enamels in white. So um, uh, one part my regular pouring medium, uh, which is Floetrol PVA glue and gloss varnish, and then equal parts of the uh, white paint, the Vallejo Pearl Medium, and the Satin Enamels. Um, these two, a lot of people use one or the other. I get really good results using both, so that's what I'm going to do today. And my consistency, which is really important also, both for the Nautilus pour and for the cloud pour, is a very thick consistency. It runs smoothly off of my stir stick when I drizzle it down, but you can also see that it creates those beautiful folds, and we call it a mound on a mound. And this is, uh, if you're going on like a scale of five to one with five being the thickest, this is probably a four. I've put a little bit of water in here just to make sure it, it flows really easily. Uh, I'm going to put down a base coat, um, which is kind of a similar color to this, a little more brassy than this. Uh, this is one of my slot buckets. I know there is a lot of gold in here, but there's also some uh, Indian yellow. There's some primary yellow. Uh, there's a couple of other things in there, but I think this is going to be a beautiful base coat. So uh, on a square canvas, the Nautilus shape is round. Um, so a lot of times the corners stay whatever color your base coat uh, is. So you want to use a color that's harmonious with these other colors. And I think this will be a great backdrop to these colors. Um, and so because I'll be um, pouring my paints through a dish strainer, um, I like this dish strainer. I got a pack of four off of Amazon uh, for $10, I think, and they last for years. They come with a little centered little spire right here, so when you put it in a sink, you can pull it out very easily. 
but I just kind of wiggle that back and forth. Since it's uh, plastic, it just kind of uh, pops off eventually. I don't want that little spire to interrupt the flow of my paint and change my uh, potentially change my pattern. So um, with this base coat down and me putting this uh, directly in the base coat and then pouring it, when I remove it, sometimes this color comes through. So again, you want to use a color that is harmonious with the rest of your, your pattern. Um, I'll be spreading my base coat using my OXO spatula, and then I'll be finding the center uh, of my canvas by dipping a piece of string from corner to corner, and where they meet is where I will place my dish strainer. Um, I really like this dish strainer because of these really uh, tall um, grooves in it. Rather than holes, it allows the paint to come out in these beautiful little scalloped um, edges um, and doesn't disrupt the flow in any way. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I chose this color palette. Actually, it was inspired by another artist. Um, I'm not sure if you follow her, but you definitely should. She's an amazing artist. Her name is Teneva Baker. And I know her from going to, uh, to the Flute Art Experience events and, and that kind of thing. And she's actually one of the other teachers at the Fluid Art Boutique in Washington, D.C. Um, I was watching her channel and um, she is absolutely brilliant at neutral color palettes. And I started looking through, you know, the thumbnails on my, um, uh, on my playlist and I was like, I almost never use a neutral color palette. I'm like the blues and purples are kind of my thing. So I was like, you know what? I need to get better at that. I should use neutral color. But not everybody wants a painting that's um, very colorful. They want something that kind of matches their decor. And a lot of people decorate their homes in neutral color palettes. So I think these browns and golds and metallics are gonna be a really nice look with this Nautilus pour. And I'm hoping with my cloud mix and that burnt umber um, that I get some really big, beautiful um, boulder cells. So it really gives this Nautilus pour a um, very organic look. So that's one of the things that I love about cloud pours is it, it uh, because of the Vallejo Pearl Medium and or the satin enamels, it tends to kind of puff up and eat the paints, especially transparent or semi-transparent paints, kind of eats the color a little bit, uh, but it also uh, gives you some beautiful um, density cells, boulder cells, and um, I'm hoping for some of that today in my Nautilus pour. I'm just making sure that that paint is going over the edge there a little bit, because when I spin it out, I want it to flow freely. Let's put this off to the side. Give that a little torch and we'll spin it out. With my slop bucket paints, I always strain them, because sometimes you get little flakes of dried paint or something like that, because I, I scrape these paints up off of my table when I'm done. I don't waste anything if I don't have to. So um, sometimes you have to end up with little lumps of things in there. So I like to strain it first, but it causes a lot of air bubbles. Move these paints out of the way and let's give that a little bit of a spin so it goes over the edges a little more and evens out that base coat. We don't want a lot of lumps. Using the spatula leaves lots of little raised bits there, and I don't want that to disrupt the flow of the paint as it moves across. The purpose of a base coat is it allow your other colors to flow over top of it. I'm not wasting paint, I'm putting it to a, a, a use, a purpose. Even though most of this won't be seen, it's fulfilling a very important purpose. Okay, I'll just make sure there's paint covering all of my sides. Paint flows better over a wet surface. So that's really what I'm trying to achieve here, is a wet surface. And I think that's good. So, okay. 
let's find our center. Let's use our yarn and we'll just anchor it here, dip it there, move it back and forth a little bit so it leaves a little bit of a mark. There's a lot of metallics in this paint here, so it's definitely gonna leave a mark. Those mica flakes show up really well. Yeah, look at that. X marks the spot. Okay, and because I've removed that little thing, it gives me an extra large hole there in the bottom where I can see. And placing this in the exact center, or as close as you can get it, is one of the keys to making sure that your center stays in the center when you spin it out. So that looks really good. Okay. Oh, you know what? I do this every time. I put down my base coat and then I forget that I should have layered my split cup first. <laughs> so you can watch me do it. Okay, so I'm gonna have to hold it over top here and do this. All right, so layering this is going to be uh, interesting because I want these paints to interact really well together um, and maximize my um, interactions. When the paint goes through the strainer, it does blend a lot. So I want, I want to control how these paints get blended. So I'm gonna put my cloud mix in the outside chamber. I only have four colors. I'm not gonna fill it up all the way. Uh, I only have four chambers, so I'm gonna leave the center chamber empty. Um, and I want that the strongest contrast together. So I'm gonna put this semi-transparent brown right next to that opaque white cloud mix. There we go. So as the paints travel through, those two colors are gonna blend and that white cloud mix is going to create some beautiful interactions with that. And the color that I put on this other outside, because as I'm going around, this color will also interact a lot with that one. So I have to decide whether I want the copper to interact with the white or the gold to interact with the white. Again, I'm gonna go with the one with the most contrast with that white, and I'm gonna put that in this outside chamber. I've got my studio door open, just the screen closing there, so you might hear some nature sounds. I hope you're enjoying that. I opened the door because my new little studio here kind of has an echo to it. I've noticed in my last couple of videos and I'm, I'm trying to give you guys a good sound quality too. I think I need a little more of that white just to even out the, the layers between everything. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to ring pour in a clockwise motion directly into the center. I'm never going to change directions. I'm not gonna go out towards the outside edges. I'm always gonna pour directly in the middle. And as I do that, I'm slowly going to turn my canvas counterclockwise. And the turning of the canvas is what causes the Nautilus shape. So I'm going to start right now. And I won't be able to talk while I'm pouring. I, I, can, I can barely remember to breathe, so <laughs> bear with me while I do this.
to worry about how clean that is there in the center. We don't have to have a, a, a perfect landing because when I pull that strainer up, it's going to mess up all those colors anyway and make them blend. So you won't see that anyway. But this is looking gorgeous already. Wow. See how those, those long slots in the strainer create these little scalloped, almost petals that are coming out? Beautiful. This is going to spin out really, really well. So before I do anything else, I'm going to pop air bubbles again. Popping the air bubbles frequently allows the satin enamel to interact with the other colors. Those air bubbles rise up through the paint and it pulls the other colors with it so it sometimes creates some cells. So if you, if you torch now before you stretch it out, those cells get larger. If you, uh, if you um, torch at the end, um, they stay tiny little uh, um, dots of white instead of um, big beautiful cells that we're hoping to get. So the cloud mix needs to rest because this is a chemical reaction between the satin enamels and the, um, uh, the pearl medium with the other paints. We want to let it rest for a moment so that that chemical reaction can happen. So we're just allowing that to happen. These paints are spreading out probably too slow for us to see it on the camera, but if I put it on time-lapse, you would see that it's slowly spreading out while, while we're waiting because it wants to self-level. And we're allowing some time for that paint to, to travel out. But I think we can give it a good spin or two here. Spread that paint out just a little more. Hopefully more of that paint will come out of the center. And these first two spins are the key to getting that 3D center. Actually, I want to spin one more time. Don't worry about these edges, the, the way it's kind of uh, uh, a little more off on this side. Once I spin this all the way out, you won't notice that. Okay, but the most important part is keeping this center where it is. So now I'm just going to gently lift this up. And when you feel it release, put your hand underneath so it doesn't drip. It often creates a little bubble here in the center. So I kind of wait for that to rise a little more. And then I use my finger to pop the bubble and straighten all those lines out. So I'm not going into the canvas at all. I'm just dipping into the, into the top of the surface a couple of times. It just pulls all of those lines together. And now we can torch again. Some beautiful cells popping up through here. Yay. Now we're going to give it a couple more harder spins. This is where it starts to get messy. <laughs> and you see this little wave of paint here. All of that needs to come off, otherwise it's going to crack. So we're just going to keep spinning. Pretty. I'm afraid I'm going to lose a lot of my brown though. See that that white cloud mix ate a lot of that brown. <clears> hmm. <throat> Beautiful. I think I do want it to come off of this end here. As long as I don't lose the gold that's on that outside edge. Nice. Beautiful. I love that spiral that's happening right there. And there's a gold spiral happening right there. That copper is really blinging out and I do have some brown that is obvious 
Okay. Let's um let's finger dip one more time in the center and then I'll bring you in for a close-up. Okay, I'm still working on the lighting in my new studio, so I hope all of that was visible. <laughs> it's getting a little dark here, so I turned on another light, and now I think that's probably better lighting, even though that you can see my ring light. Um, but I think you can see the colors much better. That um, gold from the slot bucket is a beautiful kind of mustardy metallic color. It's really cool, I love that. Um, and again, the centers of these are just spectacular. I love that petaled look there. And as you come out from there, you see that spiral coming out, which gives it the, the nautilus look and shape. Uh, the gold is blinging. Let's see if I can get in here so you can see it. Can I zoom in on that? Where can I see some sparkle? There we go, we can see some sparkle. Gotta get in the right light. Yeah, this is gonna really shine, and you've got cells of uh, copper coming up through here. Lots of copper up in this area here. Really nice. And then some big, beautiful, bolder cells happening all through this area. Look at the transparency in that brown. Ooh, that's so pretty. It looks like layers on top of layers. Really nice. Oh, look at that one little funky cell. Can I get in there? How cute is that? It looks like an eye. <laughs> I love it. This is beautiful. I'm really happy with this. I hope you um, you learned something new and maybe inspired to try something new. Have you tried a cloud board before? You definitely should. Um, so stay tuned now for the real expert, Tiffany from Willie B Studios. She, her video is coming up next followed by an entire train of my Art Lab members who have YouTube channels. But immediately following, as soon as my voice stops, I'm gonna throw up some videos uh, or some pictures of um, the submissions from my Patreons who don't have YouTube channels um, because they made some beautiful art also and I want you to see them and be inspired by them. So again, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do all those ubi things. And go mix up some paints and be fearless.